We're also going to be looking at one of the big games for 2009 in the stream of Crosshairs, and that is Sims 3. Love it or hate it, it's probably one of the biggest franchises in the world right now. We managed to catch up with one of the producers of Sims 3 and asked him all about the game and what people can expect. So we have a pretty big neighborhood. Um, it's full of all sorts of venues and places to go. So you have everything from the hospital to city hall to the military base, the stadium, uh, the public library, the gym. Um, so pretty much everything you would expect from sort of a nice, small, compact, um, modern city. Um, the people will change over time. We have a thing called story progression. Um, so you're going to see new people move in, people move out, people are going to die, uh, get married, uh, have children, get fired. Um, pretty much everything you would expect from the neighborhood so that over time everything just sort of evolves. Um, and you can really sort of watch it come to life. Now, Sims 3 seems to be a lot more goal-orientated. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? How often will these goals pop up during gameplay? Okay. Um, so we have several goal systems that really are going to push the players. Um, we have wishes, um, which basically can come up... Uh, you can have five of them at a time, and some you can satisfy in just a matter of seconds, some you can satisfy minutes, um, some will take a long time, and then you have the lifetime wish, which is something that could take your entire Sims lifetime. Um, then you have things like opportunities that are going to come up uh, from going to work, and you may have a couple of these a week. Um, we have opportunities for skills. Um, these are errands and things you can run for your neighbors and friends, um, and ways to sort of um, advance your skills, advance your careers, um, earn money, um, all sorts of rewards. Um, so we like to give players all sorts of rewarding gameplay options so that they can have a wide variety of choices and ways that they can constantly feel rewarded whether they play 20 minutes or, or 20 hours. So lifetime happiness points can be spent on all sorts of, um, uh, I think we call them achievement traits. Um, and with these achievement traits you can buy things, there's one which amuses me and I think uh, past times players will really enjoy the fact that it's called the steel bladder which means you almost never have to pee. Um, and it's just a life-saving uh, thing. But then we have some that are a little bit bigger like uh, uh, free movie tickets, um, concerts, um, which we'll call the Hagler, I believe, which lets you get um, big discounts in stores in town. Um, basically, there are ways to change the strategy, there are ways to change your sims and how you actually play. Um, and by mixing and matching them and combining them, your family can just become this powerhouse juggernaut that is almost invincible. Um, and, and it really makes the game a lot more fun and interesting because it sort of changes how you play over time. So, so how much of these things cost? For example, Steel Bladder, like, like how much do you need to actually... I think, to that, I think that one's 2,000 points. Um, of course, the tuning is going to change up until the very last second we ship the game. Um, basically, if you are doing dreams, um, not dreams, if you're doing the wishes frequently, um, you are going to earn the points, and basically, you'll get the, the, the good stuff quickly. Um, not too quickly. You're going to get the good stuff without having to work too hard. Um, but the really, really good stuff, the things like midlife crisis that let you change your traits around um, and, and get the really big rewards, you're going to have to work towards those, and you're going to have to really. Um, you know, sort of work your sims so that they get what you want. Let's talk about traits. That's another new thing that you guys are, are putting in. Uh, can you just tell us how that mechanic works within the game? Sure. Um, so traits start in Create a Sim, where you can pick up to five traits. Um, traits range anywhere from sort of physical things like you're athletic or, or an angler, which means you're great at fishing, um, natural cook. Um, you can also have sort of funny, weird ones like neurotic, um, evil, kleptomaniac, um, clumsy. Um, basically, we just have a huge variety of traits, um, and with all of them combined, I think you can have somewhere over like a million combinations of sims. So basically, in Create a Sim, you apply five traits to your sims, up to five. You can have two if you wanted to. Um, or if you're younger, you only get uh, a few, and as you age up, you get to pick another trait, or it's assigned to you based on how well you age. Um, but then, traits will give you different benefits or downsides. So. Um, if you're hot-headed, uh, your sim's going to get really angry all the time, um, and you're going to have to work to calm him down. Um, but conversely, if you're a natural cook, you're going to be a better cook than anybody else in the world. Everybody can cook, and everybody can be good at it. You're going to be the best. You're always going to be one step ahead of people. Um, so they may touch your skills. They may improve your careers, um, socialization, um, keeping your sim happy. Um, grumpy sims are always going to be slightly unhappy. Um, and, and it's just sometimes it just sort of changes the world constantly because you're Sims, they're like real people, um, and traits, just like you and I have sort of traits, maybe not five, boiled down on a little menu, but uh, these traits are going to change the game and, and constantly how everything happens and how your Sims react and do things. Okay. Now let's talk about moodless things and the things that you guys are, are putting in. Can you explain that to us? Sure. So we wanted to move past peeing, basically, to, to really sort of boil it down, and that Sims 2, Sims 1, you focused on your bladder, uh, your Sims hunger. Sleeping, things that aren't that super exciting. And you still have those things because our sims are still 
you know, simulating sort of a caricature of humanity. Um, but they're not as important. We've tried to, to move them back and, and focus on what's important to your sims. Um, so moodlets are, in a way, the thoughts, the memories of what your sims have experienced and what they're doing. Um, and, and they increase or decrease your sims mood appropriately. So um, an ambitious sim in the demo we just showed, um, he's ambitious so he's always anxious to advance. So if he doesn't get promoted every couple of days, he's just going to start freaking out. Um, conversely, he gets super, super excited when he does get promoted. Um, natural cooks are going to be able to make better food. Um, which means that their moodlets that they give from eating a meal is going to be pleasantly full, um, amazingly um, amazing meal, and it's going to be a really high mood. Um, so some moodlets are just sort of things that you sort of encounter. It's a little bit of a collection game, um, where some moodlets are things that you're going to strategize around because without them, your sims are going to have a really hard time doing things. Um, two of the most basic ones are if you take the time to get a full night's rest, um, you're going to have the well-rested moodlet, which makes your sims really happy. Um, another one is um, taking the time to prepare a meal. Um, so unlike Sims 2, you don't have to prepare every meal. You could just, you know, eat some chips and be out the door. But if you take the time to actually make the meal, buy the ingredients, or grow them, um, your Sims are going to have a really good meal. They're going to have the amazing meal moodlet, and they're going to do really well at work, really well at building skills, socializing, all these things. Um, so moodlets are basically a more interesting take on how your Sims are feeling and what they're experiencing in the world. Character creation seems to be a lot more um, robust this time around, too. Like, you've put in a lot more new options. Yeah, we've... Um, We've tried to make it both easier um, and give players a lot more variety. So you can quick, quickly pick archetypes. So you can pick uh, one shape of your face or a nose or mouth. And you can quickly, just in a matter of seconds, um, make a character that looks good and get out. Um, or you can go one layer deeper and you can change you know, how big the nostrils are, um, the bridge of the nose, um, the eye sockets, um, the mouth, all these things. Um, and, and so whether you want to make a movie star or a B star, your neighbors, your friends, yourself, or, or, or something that doesn't quite look normal, um, you could do that um, with uh, not too much effort. Um, that's something we've really, really worked towards.